Now we will begin the blessed sacred assembly of the Feast of Tabernacles afternoon worship service. God bless you. I hope you will receive much blessing during this feast. Receive abundant blessings of the Holy Spirit. Today is the sacred assembly of the Feast of Tabernacles, the last of the seven feasts in three times. Starting from today, for one week, all children of Zion around the world will participate in the preaching festival. We will carry out the Holy Spirit movement through this preaching festival. Today, let us take time to share the Word of God with a sermon titled, The Holy Spirit Movement and Preaching. The Holy Spirit movement can be traced back 2,000 years ago when God poured out the Holy Spirit of the former reign on the day of Pentecost in Mark's upper room. At first, the gospel silently spread only to a certain region of Jerusalem. It then came to spread out to the whole world, ignited by the Holy Spirit movement. As I told you during the morning worship service, the Holy Spirit of the former reign of the Pentecost was withdrawn according to prophecy. However, the Holy Spirit given on the Feast of Tabernacles will never be withdrawn. Since God pours out the Holy Spirit abundantly upon us, this Holy Spirit movement must never stop. Rather, it must continue until God comes for the last judgment. According to the Bible, what is the evidence that we have received the Holy Spirit? Whoever receives the Holy Spirit cannot remain silent because the desire to deliver the Word of God burns ardently inside of them. Therefore, we must not put out the fire of the Holy Spirit which God gives to all of us. Rather, we should share the grace of the Holy Spirit with all mankind. The more we share with others, the stronger the fire becomes in us. In the world, whenever physical power is divided and dispersed, it gets weaker. But in the spiritual world, the more the Holy Spirit is dispersed, its power only gets stronger. As a result of this, when God pours out the Holy Spirit, God also grants the gracious time to preach. Let's take a look at the book of Acts, chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 6 says, So, when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive. What will you receive? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What happens to those who receive the Holy Spirit? They become eager to testify about Christ as His witnesses in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Let's take a closer look at the words given in verse 8. What happens when the Holy Spirit comes on you? But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be, what will you be? My witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. To become a witness of Christ, what kind of work needs to be accomplished? It is only through preaching the gospel that this kind of work can be displayed. The one who receives the Holy Spirit is naturally compelled to preach the gospel. They are not influenced or coerced by anyone. That is why God appointed the preaching week of the Feast of Tabernacles and opened the way for us to preach from the first day to the last day of the feast. Therefore, during this preaching week of the Feast of Tabernacles, let us carry out the Holy Spirit movement by preaching the gospel in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Let us examine the change that occurred in the churches of the apostolic age 
after they received the Holy Spirit of the former reign on the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago. Now, let's see the situation of the early church. Let's see Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Those who accepted his message were baptized. And about how many? About 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. After receiving the Holy Spirit, Peter stood before people from every nation under heaven and boldly preached about Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit movement initiated with this great act of preaching, which resulted in nearly 3,000 being added to their number that day. All of these people repented and returned into the arms of God. We can say the beginning of the Holy Spirit movement is seen in Acts chapter 2. Let's move on to Acts chapter 2, verse 46. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. 3,000 people being baptized and countless souls receiving the truth day after day. This is the Holy Spirit movement. Even after the day of Pentecost, such gracious work continuously occurred. According to Acts chapter 4, verse 1, it is written, the priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, and the number of men grew to about how many? Five thousand. The zeal of the Holy Spirit movement allowed for the gospel work to be carried out graciously wherever it reached. Let's move to verse 31. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And what did they do? They spoke the Word of God boldly. Here, too, we can see that as soon as the people were filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke the word of God boldly. Through this, we can confirm that after the Holy Spirit is given, the great work of preaching follows. The Bible tells us that the people filled with the Holy Spirit are enabled to boldly preach the word of God. Let's go back to verse 19. When such works occurred, what kind of faith did the apostles and members of the early church have that they could boldly preach the gospel to 3,000 and 5,000 people? Let's see verse 19. But Peter and John replied, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. When the Pharisees and the teachers of the law commanded them not to preach in the name of Jesus, Peter and John boldly contested them. Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's sight to obey you rather than God. We cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. As they had such great faith, the fire of the Holy Spirit movement was not extinguished but raged on. This fire of the Holy Spirit movement, which occurred in the early church, was seen in the gospel work of the apostles. According to Acts chapter 6, verse 6, it is written, They presented these men to the apostles, who prayed and laid their hands on them. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient to the faith. As this Holy Spirit movement continued, even the priest who had regarded Jesus as only a carpenter and the son of Joseph and Mary began to accept him as God who came in the flesh. 
Such amazing works of the Holy Spirit continued to happen. Acts chapter 5, verse 12 reads, The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet together in Solomon's colonnade. No one else dared join them, even though they were highly regarded by the people. Nevertheless, more and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. They boldly preached, being convinced that they would be granted salvation through the truth that Jesus is the Christ and believe in Jesus to receive salvation and go to heaven by continuing to proclaim the truth. About 3,000, even 5,000 joined them day by day. The Holy Spirit movement brought forth such amazing works and led many souls to repentance. As they boldly preached the gospel, more and more people were added to their number. Doesn't it mean that they passionately spread the good news of God? What moved them to preach so passionately to that many people? It was the Holy Spirit. Let's look at Acts chapter 9, verse 31. Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. It was strengthened and encouraged by the Holy Spirit. It grew in numbers, living in the fear of the Lord. Not just many, but more and more people were added to their number. We can see this kind of description continually throughout the Bible. Through the fervent gospel work of the saints, the gospel rapidly spread in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. All of this was a result of the Holy Spirit movement. Let's go to Acts chapter 11 and look at verse 19. Now those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, telling the message only to Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people. Here too, we can see the expression, a great number of people. A great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. This verse shows us another example of the Holy Spirit movement through the church in Antioch. Whenever the disciples preached the gospel, more and more people came to believe. Many people from one place to another opened their hearts wide, accepting Jesus as the Christ and obeyed His teachings. However, the gospel work that is to be accomplished in this last age is much greater than that of the early church. Let's look at Acts chapter 11, verse 19 once again. Now those who had been scattered by the persecution in connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, telling the message only to Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak to Greeks also, telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. The scenes where a great number of people returned to God can be continually seen through the gospel work of the apostles. Let's move on to chapter 13, verse 46. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, We had to speak the word of God to you first, since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life. We now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord. And all who were appointed for eternal life, what did they do? Believed. Think of the people around you. So many of them are already predestined to receive eternal life. However, many of them are still wandering around. 
not knowing the truth that is being preached by the church of God. This is because neither our feet nor our voices have yet gone far enough to reach them. Let's read chapter 16, verse 3. Paul wanted to take him along on the journey, so he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. So the churches were strengthened in the faith. And what happened? They grew daily in numbers. Day after day, the number of people who believed in the truth that Jesus is the Christ continued to increase. This is what happened through the Holy Spirit movement at Jesus' first coming when the disciples received the Holy Spirit of the former reign on the Pentecost. However, God said that the Holy Spirit of the latter reign in the last days will be seven times stronger than that of the former reign. Then, shouldn't we receive the Holy Spirit that is seven times more powerful and proclaim the truth seven times more powerfully? God has opened the gates of the gospel in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Through the Holy Spirit of the former reign, given on the Pentecost, the gospel spread to Israel and its neighboring regions, Asia Minor, which is currently Turkey, and European regions, such as Corinth and Italy. At Jesus' first coming, the gospel only spread from Israel to southern Europe. But now, it is spreading throughout the whole world. We all need to realize that we are receiving more grace through the Holy Spirit than what was given at His first coming. Therefore, we must preach during the preaching festival of the Feast of Tabernacles until the day that God announces that we are no longer to bring materials for the temple, just as He once proclaimed through Moses. Shouldn't the fire of this Holy Spirit movement spread in Samaria and to the ends of the earth? Let's see Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. God definitely said, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world to all nations. The destiny of the gospel is that it should be preached in the whole world to all nations according to God's word. 2,000 years ago, God came to assure us and testify about this fact. He said, this is absolutely the outcome of the gospel. It will not fail. Let's go to Romans chapter 10, verse 17. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. But I ask, did they not hear? Of course they did. Their voice has gone out into where? Into all the earth. Their words to the ends of the world. Jesus taught us that the Word of God will not be limited to only one place. Rather, it will be preached to all nations throughout the world. I believe that there is a significant meaning in the will of God to give us seven days to preach. Just as the Israelites marched around the city for seven days and shouted in the time of Joshua, I'm convinced that God will open the hearts of the people. If we preach this good news for seven days to our heart's content to whoever we meet, whether a co-worker, a classmate, our neighbors, acquaintances, or our friends. I pray that everybody will bear abundant beautiful fruits during this feast. Let us read one more verse and conclude the sermon. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. Arise, shine, 
for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. What will be the result when we do this? Verse 4, Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you the riches of the nations will come. Let's continue with verse 8. Who are these that fly along like clouds, like doves to their nests? Now, let's move on to verse 21. Then will all your people be righteous, and they will possess the land forever. They are the shoot I have planted, the work of my hands, for the display of my splendor. The least of you will become a thousand. The churches grew daily in numbers. Wasn't this the result that God granted when they continue to preach during the Holy Spirit movement? The least of you will become a thousand, the smallest a mighty nation. I am the Lord. In its time, I will do this swiftly. What do we need to do for this to happen? It happens when we all arise and shine. Through this year's autumn feast, let us receive much grace, blessing, and power of the Holy Spirit. In accordance with the power of the Holy Spirit that we received, let us preach this gospel in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. I ask you, all Zion family members, to preach the gospel swiftly in Samaria and to the ends of the earth so that we can speed Father's coming. By this, I would like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.